the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we celebrate the Eucharist today, as always, we call to mind God's great generosity that we need for forgiveness for our sins. You came to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into the desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumblings of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight, you shall eat flesh, and in the morning, you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires and renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on your new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord Jesus Someone once said that, uh, I guess, the two opinions, adversity, uh, strengthens character. 
And another thought is, no, adversity reveals character. Um, and in one sense, there's some truth to both. If you have a little bit of courage, adversity will bring that out and, and possibly strengthen it, because you have to exercise it, which you have. But at the same time, if you don't have it, but you think you do, the adversity will reveal that, no, you don't. You know, it will reveal the character, what the true character is. See, we see in the gospel, uh, in, in the first reading today, that says the people were grumbling against Moses and Aaron. You know, I, I, you know as, as a leader, you know, I, I, I can feel for them. I can hear Moses after everything that's happened, the exodus, and, and they're just complaining to him, you know, saying, now, why, did, why did you bring us out of here? It's like, we didn't ask you to take us. Kind of rewriting the history, they were pretty glad that Moses uh, led them out of Egypt. They said, you know, but at least in Egypt, you know, we had food to eat, and, you know, here we are starving to death. It's like slavery never looks so good than when they're in that hot desert, hungry. Uh, the adversity wasn't showing a kind of great character. They grumbled. Why did you lead us out here? Sometimes we forget, you know, God keeps every promise God makes, but there's some promises he didn't make. And I think we hold God to promises God never made. Like if you follow me and are faithful, you'll never have any problems or challenges in life. Amen. That's not what he said. Jesus said just the opposite. You want to be my follower? You must deny yourself, take up a cross, and follow me. He told us the truth. But he also said that, again, that he would be there with us the whole way. So there's a saying, you know, God never promised a smooth journey, but a safe landing. So there are rough roads. There are challenges. There'll be times we are hungry when we're longing for something we don't have yet. We'll be frustrated with our weaknesses. We will, you know, and, and we'll, we'll be frustrated with our own sins and the sins of others. But Jesus, he says, turn to me. You know, I will give you what you need. He's a good shepherd. You know, he says that. And so when we ask, even as a church and as, a, as Christian people, what are we called to do? What are the works of God? This is the work of God, Jesus said, believe in my son. The first and most important work we would do is faith. Trusting in him. We do everything else, but don't, have, don't start with faith. Then we're ultimately not going to continue. We're not going to persevere. He is the one that can truly conquer our hunger, overcome our thirst. Because he is a good shepherd. And a good shepherd does at least three things. He will feed you, he will lead you, and he will protect you. He provides for what we need to do what he desires. He will lead and guide us so we know the right way to go. And he'll watch over and protect us. Let us truly put our faith in the one who is the bread of life, the one in whom we will never hunger and never thirst. Let's now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus Christ is the food of our souls that enables us to live Christian lives. Let us make our prayers to the Lord for all the needs of the world. For the leaders of the church, may they teach by their way they live their lives that Christians do not live by bread alone, but by the life of Christ within them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper appreciation of the presence of Christ among us, may we realize the Eucharist as the center of our lives as Christians and be one in mind, heart, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our Sunday TV Mass community, we remember and especially pray for our friends and benefactors who generously help make this ministry possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our 
Good and gracious God, we thank you for always hearing our prayers, those we have voiced aloud, and those in the hearts of all who are listening. Hear those prayers and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died. In your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray now with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word my soul shall be. Let us pray. 
Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before final blessing, just like uh, again, thank all those who made this TV Mass possible and that connects us, we celebrate this great gift of the Holy Eucharist. Uh, to encourage you that, uh, you know, over, uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to be able to go to confession, to do call your parish, uh, parish, parish priests, and to make arrangements, whether by uh, maybe a special appointment or seeing if they've resumed their regular times. So we encourage you to take advantage of that uh, as we, um, Again, that celebrate that uh, you know, always the, the, the presence of Christ with us. You know, that, that, that said, adversity sometimes may reveal that we're not as far along as we thought we wanted to be. But then we turn to him, you know, the one who is our strength to help us bring us along. So be encouraged. May the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. عندئذ سوف يجيبه الصالحين يا سيدي متى رأيناك جائعا فأطعمناك أو عطشانا فرويناك متى رأيناك غريبا فاستضفناك أو عاريا فكسيناك متى رأيناك مريضا أو سجينا فزرناك الملك سوف يجيب حقا أقول لكم كل ما فعلتموه مع أحد من هؤلاء الإخوة والأخوات فعلتموه من أجلي